Welcome to the Weekly Lead Podcast. I'm Becky Tirabasi, co-pastor of Viewpoint Church in Newport Beach, California. And this podcast is designed to reach people who have known me over the past few decades. I am looking for leaders, weekly leaders. And each week I bring a message from a sermon that will encourage you to lead by being loyal to God's word, encouraging to others, advocates for the young generation and devoted to prayer. Here we go. Join me now. Fourth way he spoke truth to youth, he exposed twisted thinking. Honestly, all I want you to do is fill in the blank. Is there a boyfriend or girlfriend who has twisted thinking and wants you to buy into it? Paul says they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God. They began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like, and as a result, their minds became dark and confused. Is there a peer group, a social club, or social media? Do you have a fantasy about entertainment? In this book, it was more or less, you know, I read this thing, or I watch this movie, and I think that's reality about having this one sip of drink and this sip of drink, when in truth, this is trouble for some people. It's not like I'm going to have this and have this romantic night. It's I'm going to be smash face and on my face, and then do something bad and hurt people and say bad words and crazy business. And honestly, I watched it in my own home as a child. It was... I mirrored it. So every leader, coach, parent, pastor has to speak truth to youth about twisted thinking and darkened minds. The fifth way shows us how, with empathy. empathy. Paul was humble. He says, no one's righteous. No one. 323, everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's standard. Paul empathized with the new young believers. And he empathized with older believers. We all sin. We all fall short. Empathy is the great equalizer. It's why Raj and I have spent our entire lives attempting to humbly speak truth to youth for so many reasons, but empathy being the hugest reason. This is why we have a sober, sensitive church. I want every young woman every one of them, to come to this church and feel safe. I, this is why Roger does, seriously dating or engaged, and he says, nobody really wants to hear it. I want you to live sexually pure. I want you to have a long-lasting relationship where you build trust from engagement to marriage. We've lived in this culture. We've been parents in this community. Now we've been pastors here. Here, for almost a decade, Roger, for over three decades, in this community, we understand how defi- difficult it is to be countercultural, especially as parents. But we've experienced not only the fallout and the rejection by speaking God's truth to youth and young adults and their families, but we've done it with empathy. It's because we failed. We failed in our relationships. We failed in our believing that alcohol could fill an empty hole and a boy could make me happy. We failed. All sinned. And we found the truth in the gospel. The sixth way Paul spoke truth to youth was expecting God to change the world through them. I went ahead to 2 Corinthians 5.17. It was the first scripture, the last thing I heard the janitor say to me after he led me to Christ and I left his office. He said, this is a gift from God who brought you back to himself through Christ. And God has given you a task. I mean... I was a Christian two minutes when he said to me, God's given you a task. What does the A-type, fired-up kind of girl want to know? You're not going to have to go to treatment and AA and psychology for the next 10 years before you're allowed to open your mouth. No, you can open your mouth today. You are a recovering alcoholic in one hour, but The Lord Jesus Christ has come into my life, and he has given me a task to reconcile other people to him. I went right up to the car dealership where I worked, and I said to these guys, I accepted, I asked Jesus Christ to come into my life. They're like, what? (laughs) 
you? I said, yes. And he, and I, I said to one of them, I'm going to heaven. He goes, no, you're not. You're not. I know you're not. I'm like, no, I am. The janitor told me. And then he's like, what? A janitor? I'm like, oh, yeah. I was all over it. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. I could tell them no longer counting people's sins against them. He gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. When I spent 21 days with these nine kids in the Burning Hearts Club, we were going to meet once a week for three weeks. By the time it was over, we met every day, didn't we, Pete? Every day, Natalie and AJ and Kyle and Claire and Carrie and uh, uh, Megan. Every day. It was like we, got, we had to find each other. We had to hang out together because this were, these were 19-year-olds in Newport Beach trying to be sober. And they're like, ain't happening out there. We need, we need each other. This is why we have summer together at Viewpoint Church. It's why we try to have as much fun as we can have. And it's why at the end of the Burning Heart contract, I write 2 Timothy 2.21 from Paul to Timothy, his mentee. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you'll be ready for the master to use you for every good work. You see, I believe in this young generation like the janitor believed in me. When I did not have one day of sobriety, when I thought I was pregnant, I might be going to jail, and I knew nothing about the Bible, he believed God loved me, could and would, and immediately and dramatically changed my life. That's why we planted Viewpoint Church. It's why I do Burning Hearts. And not only do I do Burning Hearts, everybody does Burning Hearts. They lead their own group. They just go, I'm doing this. And they lead a 21-day adventure. It's why we ask parents in our church, if you have underage kids, don't really do alcohol. Get them through. Get them through this. It's why we teach sexual purity to dating class. It's why we do Summer of Fun. you got to go. The dancing was a blast, was it not? It's why we have a weekly healing and restorative prayer meeting. It's why we read the entire Bible. And it's why we talk about the power of darkness. Our deepest desire and biggest hope is to raise up game-changing, whole and holy young men and women leaders in our community and in our country. They need you. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope you've been encouraged by this message, and I hope you join me every week for the Weekly Lead Podcast. Meanwhile, you can follow me daily on Instagram at Becky Tirabasi and find the link in the bio with everything you need to become a Weekly Leader.